Hi, John Strohmeyer with Strohmeyer Law. Today we're talking about the estate planning implications of life insurance. Now, as part of every estate plan, just about all of my clients have some form of life insurance. But there are a lot of questions and a lot of confusion about this. So I'm not somebody who's going to sell you life insurance, but I do want you to make sure that you know some of the things that I think about and what I want my clients thinking about when we're considering and integrating life insurance into an estate plan. So here's the top three things you need to know about life insurance. First, know that life insurance comes under a category of property that's generally called non-probate assets. So when we think about assets as part of estate planning, there are two big groups of property we want to think about. Number one, our probate property. These are things that are going to be governed by the last will. So think about your car, probably your house, your socks, the stuff in your house. That's going to follow what the will says, meaning it's going to go through probate. It's going to be subjected to any, you know, paying any final debts. And then whatever's left gets paid out to the beneficiaries. Now, non-probate assets includes life insurance, but it also includes things that have any sort of contract right that tells the custodian of that account, so the life insurance carrier in this case, where the money goes when you die. Basically, you've set up a contract with that company. And when you pass, they're agreeing to pay it somewhere. So for life insurance, your contract with them says when you die, the beneficiary will get that benefit. It doesn't matter what your will says. It doesn't matter who the executor is. It's going to go to the beneficiary named there. Likewise, 401ks, IRAs, 403b accounts, annuities, any bank account that has either a transfer on death or a pay on death or even a joint tenancy with right of survivorship. Those are non-probate assets. And when it's a non-probate asset, it's going to go where the account says it goes. It's, it's going to skip the terms of the will. So it's important to remember when you change your will, if you have a revocable trust agreement instead, life insurance isn't necessarily going to follow those changes. It's going to do what its beneficiary designations say. So safety tip on that is make sure you know who the designated beneficiaries are because it's not going to follow your will. Item number two. Know what type of insurance you're getting and know why you're getting it. The two broad types of insurance are term insurance and permanent insurance. Term insurance is there for people who are planning for an unexpected death in the next term of years. So this tends to be cheaper insurance. It's insuring your life for the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years. And you're saying, look, if I die in the next uh, term of years, then I want you to pay out this amount to whoever I've designated. After that period of time is over, you know, my death may not be unexpected. We're not taking that chance. So when you buy term insurance, you're really saying my death during these next term of years is going to be unexpected. It's going to put some hardship on the ones I leave behind. So I need to be able to replicate the income I have, possibly take some worries off the family in terms of paying off the house, maybe paying for college for loved ones. You know, that's what the term insurance is for. The other type of insurance to know about is permanent insurance. And there are various different flavors of this. Universal, whole life are the two big types, but permanent insurance insures you from now until the time you die. And this is more of an investment than insuring your unexpected death. This assumes, well, it knows that you're going to pass and it's assuming that you're going to pay from now until the time you die one way or another and you'll build up some cash value in that policy but it's assuming it's going to pay out that in contrast to that term policy you're just saying like if i don't die within these next few years the money has just gone to the insurance carrier and if i don't die within that time no there is no benefit permanent insurance it's saying we know at some point you're going to die the insurance company is responsible for making a payout on my death so again thing to know here make sure you're getting the right right type of insurance if you're young and really just insuring against an unexpected death then term insurance is probably going to be the right answer for you if you're looking to actually make more of an investment and uh, have a bigger return no matter when you die permanent insurance is probably where you're looking
Finally, the last thing to think about is the taxes that come along with this insurance. So there are two different tax systems we want to think about. One, income tax, where we're all used to this every year we file our 1040 to report and pay tax on our uh, income and deductions, losses, and credits. Then the other system is the wealth transfer tax system. So made up of the estate tax, the gift tax, and the generation skipping transfer tax. Now, life insurance has some magical properties. If we are talking only about income tax, the receipt of life insurance is exempted from income tax. So when you receive income tax, or when you receive life insurance benefits, that receipt is not going to be subject to income tax. The difference, though, is that it's still subject to estate tax. So when we think about estate tax, the very short, very incomplete calculation for estate tax is we total up all the property when you die that you own. And if it is over the uh, unified credit amount, then the IRS is going to be expecting a check of roughly 40% of the overage. Now, for the people who know how to run this calculation, yes, I know, I skipped over a lot of steps in that, and it is not a good way of thinking about it, but that's a good shorthand. So, I don't want to see that in the comments. When we're totaling up the assets that, that you own when you die, though, life insurance death benefits are included in that calculation. So right now, the exemption amount is $11.7 million per person. If you are a single person and you own a $5 million stock portfolio and a $10 million death benefit life insurance policy, and you die, then guess what? 10 plus 5, 15, you're way over the limit and you're going to be sending a, or your estate is going to be sending a check to the IRS. Now, the problems you're going to come up with are that life insurance may have gone to somebody who doesn't want to write a check back to the executor or the IRS, but the executor is still going to be responsible for paying that tax. So what you want to remember, life insurance is exempted from payment of income tax. The receipt of that is going to not be subject to income tax for the recipient but it is going to be subject to a state tax. And we need to think about that when we're calculating your potential exposure for a state tax. So to pull things back together, life insurance can be a great tool to provide liquidity for families when there is a death. Things we want to think about. First, the beneficiary designations are important. What those beneficiary designations say will trump whatever is in the will, so you want to make sure that you're checking that. Number two, know the type of life insurance you're getting and why you're getting it. Term insurance is there to insure against an unexpected death over the next few years, whatever the term of that policy is. Permanent insurance, whether it's whole, universal, or some other form of permanent insurance, is more of an investment and should be treated as such. It's not there to insure against an unexpected death. It's there as a different type of investment, knowing that at some point you will in fact pass. Finally, know the tax consequences of this. Yes, life insurance is received free of income tax, but it is still potentially subject to estate tax, and you need to factor both of those tax planning options into your own personal plan. Thanks for watching. I've been John Strickland.